well, how do Infamous decide to pair it out? A lot of your offlaners, again, very banned out. The Timber Slot does kind of sneak through in a very nice way. If they pick a Strength Hero here on Infamous' side, I feel like Wildcard would just send it. So there's got to be a little bit of tension there. I don't think Infamous can necessarily go for one of the heroes they like. Like, can't see them going for, like, Kunkka. But Shadow Demon is the hero, though, that I was really expecting Wildcard to pick up last time just because, well, Shadow Demon is so good versus Tiny. Still so good versus Tiny. Before, it was uh, kind of a double win whenever Death Prophet was mixed into those first phase picks and bans because, again, Shadow Demon is great versus that hero, and then the Tiny just covered some bases. But... Now I do wonder, you've got very low stun, very kind of slow damage here, as much as we can praise the Shadow Demon. When it comes to burst damage, you need someone else to actually do it alongside your Storm Spirit here. Nice. And that's not burst, but that is a lot of control, and that is another hero that's just going to get on top of that Pugna and really cause a big problem for Wildcard. They really don't have anything to protect this backline. I think this might be a little bit of carryover from the previous game as well, coming from Oscar in particular with that Sand King. We talked about it repeatedly, and it was very much the case. You go in with the Sand King, and you're in. You're kind of done. You're just stuck in that fight until you either win it or die. The Night Stalker gives Oscar a lot more room to maybe sort of dive in and out to pick his moments to not have to singularly commit uh, to one target. So, like you said, it, it does take away maybe a little bit of burst damage, but what you get in exchange could work out well. Now we need to see, though... What ties this all together? If Parker is on a high damage, high durable uh, durability hero, then Infamous really feel like they've put together something special. Yeah, and now I really am kind of considering what we see from Wildcard here. I don't want to throw out names like the Pango, even though I feel like I would kind of want to be Pango if I'm Wildcard. You are playing versus the Silence, and it's a little bit rough. And they're going to keep us guessing, but Wraith King, very safe, very stable is a hero that doesn't mind all too much if he does get Demonic Purge, just because, you know, you're walking in, you've got the natural lifesteal, you should be able to keep yourself pretty happy. And if you are wasting that Demonic Purge onto him, this puts this Tiny's position into question a little bit, because that's assuredly Yamsen's hero, so we're either going to see either the mid or the offlane Tiny, but uh, that's where Infamous kind of have to decide here, assuming that we're probably going to see offlane bans from them, though. Yeah, we'll see whether or not that's the case, probably. But they've got... Uh... Still some time in reserve to think this one over. So, see them switch things up, but I don't know. It just seems like there isn't really much of a, not need to, but much of an incentive to at this point. Still just ban out the heroes that are expected and wildcard do swing something a little bit strange. Then I don't think there's anyone that's going to burn you too massively in that sort of mid. Yeah, I really am kind of cram in my brain here the pango is an obvious one to me but again versus oh, okay the timber saw is the most obvious one but we were expecting that in the last phase um aside from that though it does feel like we are missing a, a very characteristic divine llama hero here i uh, don't think we're going to see him take up a I was going to say the Viper, but of course Viper's already banned out here. Uh, in terms of the Beastmaster, I feel like versus Night Stalker, of course, you kind of trade vision. You've got the Hawks flying around, but then Night Stalker pops the Dark Ascension, and then things get a little bit messy. Uh, if there's one thing the Wild Card could look for, it's something to actually meet the Io when the Io does go in here. Uh, right now, they don't have really all too much to put down in front of that relocate. And then, of course, Pit Ward's taken out. And I was going to say Tidehunter, but okay. Infamous are reading my mind here a little bit, and that does leave Divi with very few choices, and that's a very fast pick, and Ooh. they get the NP. Okay, someone else is going to try it out. I mean, it has only worked in the past, so I'm very excited to see another form of this. In the sort of Costabile special for four Zoomers to this point, but Infamous will take a page from uh, one of their books here. And now if you're wild card, well... I was going to say, how do you deal with it? This, uh, this The Broodmother's interesting, but the Brood could still sort of fall victim to that Sprout play. You'll still be leashed up in it. You're not going to be able to just sort of drop your web and and uh, crawl your way out of it. So once the Nature's Prophet hits 20, that's not a hero that can necessarily uh, deal with that. But I think if you're putting Divai Lama on this hero and your wild card, you're kind of hoping that you don't let him get to level 20 and that you just sort of roll this one earlier. Yeah, and 
it has been so long since I've seen a Broodmother. I, I almost completely forgot that Devai plays this, because usually when we talk about Broodmother, well, usually the first name that comes up is Vitali on Hikori's side, but it has been a very long time since I want to say this hero was actually viable, and it, it's always been on the outside looking in when it comes to the meta, and sometimes, you know, it feels great, but I think the problem, and it's a very similar problem when we've seen the Visage picked up in a lot of our games so far is, what do you actually buy? What do you actually build? What happens when your hero is not really the best and your hero doesn't really have that kind of door slam item pickup where the game changes for you? I feel like we should see Divi just rushing an Orchid, but of course, uh, Orchid, it gives you attack speed, it gives you damage, both things that you really need, but does it actually lead you into those kills? And it also just means that wildcard only have Esk and Yamsun to go in for those initiations. Those are your blink carriers, and they're blinks that you need to buy. Very naturally, Wildcard's lineup just doesn't make a lot of plays, where Infamous could certainly look at that outpace. It's where having natural playmakers like the Night Stalker and the Storm Spirit can sometimes just run you over. And there are certainly big concerns on the Wildcard side, but we'll see whether or not they can be the ones to dictate that tempo, because... If they can, you know, if you can get a trio of Wraith King Tiny and Broodmother going, then there are a lot of teams in the past who have just sort of fallen underneath that bulldozer. So that is going to be the game plan for them. We'll see if they can pull it off. Otherwise, this are set up quite nicely to endure that sort of opening salvo and then hit their own timings and start turning things. Yeah, and I really think that they will. It will just be a matter of will Wildcard get enough time to really get into their groove? Of course, that begins and ends with, I think, Esk's middle lane here. If he has a really nice start, if he has a really nice 9-10 minute Blink Dagger timing, you can certainly see him be the one aggressing onto the other side of the map. Uh, the only problem is, of course, at the end of the day, you are still playing a core tiny into that Shadow Demon, especially post-10 minutes. Pre-10 minutes, he's got nothing to worry about. Esk can just play tiny, but once that Demonic Purge is online any initiation he does go for always has to be kind of played with a grain of salt because if you do end up stuck in the middle of five heroes pretty much just gonna die here that's also where infamous i think almost hero for hero copying uh four zoomers have that global strategy having the io night soccer i, I mean it's kind of crazy how many heroes they can bring to these early fights really a is the only one who might be stuck a little bit far behind but that's where i think wildcard need to be really careful with what heroes are showing on the map Sneaky play from Sammy there. It's in around the backside to throw down a sentry ward to lock off Alone's camp. And I was going to start smacking Michael around a little bit, but yeah, that's what Oscar's still there for. Heather's away. Should be just fine, but that is always a sticking point with this mid matchup against the Storm Spirit. If you take away that side camp with any degree of consistency, it's going to keep Alone not shut down, but it'll prevent him maybe from just surging forward too quickly. Yeah, it'll certainly slow him down, especially when it is just inches whenever it comes to who actually gets the lead here. But that's also where I think this should just be a farming lane. One that maybe once alone hits level three, and if you can force Esk away from his tower, uh, the Tiny will certainly be eating a little bit more harass. But really, the only big win in this lane is whether or not you can force Esk to buy a salve. If you can't, well, it's just going to be a very stable farm fest. Keep an eye on it. See if Alone tries to go for any sort of aggressive play. In the meantime, well, in the meantime, what do we got in these side lanes? Oscar and Michael just going to also be farming oriented here. There's not a whole lot they can do in the early stages. Of course, oh, uh, that's awkward. That courier goes right to Sammy and is going to take that snipe for free. So a little bit of economic damage done, but I want to see if Sammy and Yamsun do try to get aggressive here. You need to wait until there's actually a point in the Wraithfire Blast for this Wraith King, but maybe they could get in onto the Io, sort of beat him up a little bit with Oscar having very little in the way of defensive capabilities as A denies himself to the neutral. Yeah, and, and this is a, an interesting lane down bottom. There isn't really much that either the Pugna or the Shadow Demon can kind of do here. They're really just kind of trading their mana while watching their stronger laners farm here. 
but at the very least that's where insatiable hunger is very nice for securing ranged creeps uh the infamous side does not have that luxury they don't they don't have really the easiest time when it comes to getting that easy xp it's where you can certainly see uh maybe divide pull ahead a little bit but this is also a lane where the pugna wants to stay as far away from the brood as possible just so you do get that level six that much faster that's why we see alexo very oddly in the mid lane right now but hey okay, okay whatever works works it's a bit of a funky one but yeah like you said if it works who cares right it looks funny but it works then it's gonna be a-okay with it as alexo himself actually takes that second water rune so esk still had one bottled up didn't really want to pop it just to go grab another so might as well let the teammate have it farm up underneath this tower here and you know lone's not really getting his opportunity to be the aggressor at this point the tiny's really playing this well so far yeah, and unfortunately, once S gets level 6, well, it's not really a kill anymore. It's just where the grow armor is a little bit too strong at level 1. I mean, getting 10 armor for free on any hero would be ridiculous. Well, back up top, Oscar and Michael just uh, doing a little bit of drifting here. This one's kind of strange, too. You would think the Night Stalker at this point would maybe just try and stay in the lane, because you can't really do much to Yamsun, but he's not going to be able to do a whole lot to you. Michael's really the only possible target here so he does get back to the lane eventually just in time for uh, a little bit of harassment to come in but this is what the io is here for it's gonna be able to walk off all of that damage yeah unfortunately though as we usually talk about it doesn't have the greatest partner in this game it's where you really are going to see michael uh struggle when it comes to finding who he actually ends up playing with of course, the longer he is attached to Oscar, the lower level your Night Stalker, the slower you get that Dark Ascension available to you. Uh, same with the other cores, though. You can't really uh, stay tethered to an NP. He's going to be TPing across the map, and the Storm is constantly going to be looking for plays. It's where uh, I think that's a little bit of an awkwardness in Infamous's lineup, especially early on. Both the supports rotate mid. Sammy was able to get the Nightmare down onto alone. That leads into the Avalanche, into the Toss, into the Tree Toss, and... All of that still wasn't enough. Ask needed one or two more right clicks in there, but he does find the kill and one gets taken down. That's the first kill of the game, not the first death, as A was able to deny himself earlier on, but it is going to go Ask's way, and that makes this middle lane quite a bit nicer for him. Yeah, it's a really nice little uptick. Unfortunately, that kill does get split XP wise three ways, so it's not like that really propels anyone further. Uh, ahead of the other mid laner. I think maybe S gets his level six slightly faster than alone, but at the same time, I think the bigger loss for Infamous is still just not scouting out the small camp. Alone's just now going to see it five minutes into the game. It's kind of rough. There's also been no attempt to stack because that IO is, of course, stuck with his partner in lane. So you're not going to have that easy recovery method. Alone has to really play for his own game at this point. He's going to stack up himself, so a little bit of self sufficiency there, but. Always love to have them just sort of ready-made for you, and <laughs> just slows them up a little bit. Every little bit is going to matter here for your wild card in terms of trying to make sure that alone doesn't just run all over you. But other than that, I mean, we sort of talked about this maybe being a farm fest across multiple lanes. That still is very much the case. Not a lot of movement, just a very sort of <laughs> economically focused opening. Let's put it that way. However, as I say that. A and Alex are going to trade some damage, but without the mid laners getting involved, this is just kind of them burning through each other's reach. Yeah, it's it's not the most entertaining thing, to say the least, but I also think it's an early game that really heavily favors wildcard. We already talked about how they need items. Infamous are the ones that are only bound by their levels as a lot of mana all alone. That's where Michael is. Okay. Nightmare's gonna get juggled, Oscar's coming in, Parker steals the kill with the Wrath of Nature, and... Well, Intimus have found their first kill. A is... He's in a bit of a strange spot here, but it doesn't look like this is turning into anything, he's just doing a little bit of scouting, so... Well, the rune forces a little bit of conflict there, as... The wild card... I think that's a play you had to sort of try at the very least, but... Really able to make it happen, and... Do they really try this? Yamsen is... Without his ult, but he's still pretty tanky. Michael is trying to give over as much mana as possible. Parker actually TP'd it in. Oscar comes over as well, and if you're going to bring four heroes into it, then sure, that makes that kill a lot easier for them to pick up. 
Yeah, and they knew that the Storm Spirit had almost wandered over towards that left side of the map, but I really thought that maybe we'd see that Wraith King rotate out. Unfortunately, that's where the Vi in anchoring bottom is taking all the farm, so there isn't that easy uh, farming avenue for Yamsun to just immediately take over, and very well timed from Infamous, because they hit him up right before the level 6. Now, unfortunately for Yamsun, he has to take up middle, which then pushes Esk across, and Esk is not doing the Blink Dagger Rush on this Tiny. He has got the phase boots, he's got the wand components. This is not going to be your 10-minute Blink Dagger where suddenly he's just killing heroes across the map. This is the more farm-oriented, this is the slower style, which I honestly does not think favors them, as Yamsun, if he dies again, and he is dead, that yep. is so unfortunate. That is a massive setback now for him with the second death after the lane swap up. And at this point, they may be looking for a little bit more. They see Esk with basically no mana. And Ooh. here comes Alone zipping in. Parker's going to TP forward as well. Esk is in some serious trouble here. And they're going to be able to lock him down. That's the two biggest kills they could probably have gotten on the map right now. And Oscar adds insult to injury there with the uh, pickoff onto the courier. So a little bit more damage being done. Devi... He has shifted things up a little bit. He takes that tier 1 tower bot. Now he's going to make his way mid and start spinning those webs. And this is certainly an interesting move from the wild card side. I'm just not sure if it's one that's going to work out. Because if they get onto that broodmother, they're still going to be able to silence her up, pull her back in, put her under with the disruption, you know, the whole shebang. And Vi is not overly durable at the moment. Yeah, it's also where pre-level 6 on both Alexo and Sammy Boy, I can't really take this fight at all. This is a lot of damage in from Devi. Need to kill these spiderlings off, but once you kill them, well, now Devi's got to go get more spiders. You know, you can't afford to just stick around here. Even though Michael, oh, I think he lost okay. track of his hero. That was really weird. Devi's able to get in there with the spawn spiderlings nuke. That's enough damage to kill off Michael, and, well... If you're wild card, maintain cohesion. That's the number one thing here. They're pushing forward, but they're pushing together. The second you separate is when things could start to turn. So we'll maintain that grouping. A is going to get taken down as Divide just kept on throwing out that nuke. And we'll add a second support kill to the tally. And the more successful these early rotations are, now that's going to buy time for Wraith King to farm up bottom. I feel like this is a much more risky position for Divi to be in, but I think this is a map-wide call from Wildcard. I feel like if Divi just stood in his lane, let his Wraith King continue to suffer, then we won't have a Wraith King in this game. So even though he's kind of presenting himself mid, as long as his teammates can back him up, this will certainly work. And it's a lot of damage on the Tier 1 here. Even though Alexo is certainly not the highest level Pugna in the game, it just kind of works. Unfortunately, though, top, easy picks for the Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. They decide to focus in on the kill onto Sammy as opposed to defending their tower. And even if you TP all those heroes in, tower could probably still fall. And then you're stuck in a team fight that you may not have won to play. So... They'll sacrifice the tier one. They get another kill into Alone's hands. Two, one, and three now on the Storm Spirit. He is, I believe, done with his power treads now. They haven't been brought out to him, but uh, I assume he's got it because he's now queued up that BKB as his next big purchase. Which is a little bit interesting because I, I genuinely don't know if he has his actual boots on the courier. I hope so, but. At the same time, I feel like he might just be straight up rushing it, which will be an absurdly fast BKB if he forgoes the boots, but it also kind of makes you wonder, I guess, right? You know, he's got a Wisp. He's got, you know, he's got the relocate. He has his ultimate. Maybe not, but there's got to be a reload somewhere, right? I saw Arsker getting hit up mid by those spiders, but that's Dark Ascension used, and that's Dark Ascension used at the beginning of that timing there. So it's gonna be daytime for quite a bit now. This is not in the most ideal situation. You're trying to get vision though, and somehow they still find the kill on the Sandy boy. That's kind of crazy. They're able to salvage something there. And uh, I did take a look at that courier, by the way, alone is actually just not buying boots. Um, he just doesn't feel like it or he forgot. I don't really know, but <laughs> he's gonna go without it. So he's a BKB boy, he's a BKB yeah. boy. Yeah. And, you know, who, who needs boots when Michael can do the walking for you with the reload? So, see if that pays off. Right now, they're trying to get damage onto the Tier 2. Uh, Michael's helping with a maxed out overcharge, but it's still a Storm Spirit right-clicking a tower. So, you're not exactly chunking your way through this, but the Siege Creep does help them get a nice 1,000 health off of that Tier 2. Yeah, I know. It's certainly not chip that you uh, need to ignore here. I really am just concerned... 
as ooh, A is really far out. He's probably just need to throw out a spell. Yeah, he just throws out anything, but that's where once they see that Bane is level 6, they have to get out. They cannot cancel grip very easily in this game. Uh, unless you're willing to just run in with the Night Stalker or alone is there to cancel it. It's where, unfortunately, uh, the IO is not so adept at dealing with the Bane unless you are maybe getting that relocate. And they are relocating, but it is just to get mana for the storm. Well, not the most glamorous relocate in the world, but keeping alone safe and sort of farming is going to be the priority right now because Parker doesn't really... Okay, need a lot of assistance farming at least is what I was going to say. Now he needs help getting away from this one as Devai tries to jump in on him. Parker cancels the TP though as he realizes alone is coming in, but... Eh, Devai is just a little bit too fast. I said earlier he might have trouble once your Prophet hits that 20 talent, but we're 12 minutes in. Still a long ways off. So for now... Devise just got free reign to go really wherever he wants, whenever he wants. Yeah, and this is my major concern. Infamous weren't really able to get this mid tower with their last push. They would have loved to snowball it. And then you look over at the tiny, and Esk is about to have his blink dagger. And then the game for wild card just starts. At the same time, Devise is going to have his orchid for the big team fight that will be coming here. And if Infamous aren't careful, if they let themselves kind of trickle in after the fact, and it's something they need to constantly be afraid of is moving too far away from that Shadow Demon, I could certainly see them getting picked off, getting split apart. There's already going to be pressure on the supports because there are those Spiderlings just constantly looking out for you in the backline and running at you. I just wonder if this Blink Dagger is going to really blow this game wide open. Not to mention, Esk has a DD room. So when he does go for that initial jump, there are very few heroes who can survive that a ready-made kill for wildcard as long as they can find a target so well, let's see where s goes on his way towards the south side jungle for now doesn't want to get too far away from his backup just in case so see a massive maneuver from him just yet but where's there's the smoke okay heroes grouped up they got to be going for something four-man smoke pushing their way up the river nice play to try and get onto the storm spirit if they could swing all the way up there but I'm not sure they actually have the time to do that. I'm not even sure if they really know Alone's still there. Well, hold on. Scan comes in. So they know somebody's up here. Who will they find? It's Michael that they hit up first. Now they'll see Alone sort of zipping. So it's not really anyone they're going to be able to chase after. They'll just take the easier kill. What's going on at the other side of the map, though? Hold on a second. Damn, son. Getting himself in a little bit of trouble, but look at those TPs coming in. They're going to try and turn this one around. Michael actually just bought back to try and rejoin this fight. Uh, it is enough to take down the first life, but the reincarnation gets him right back in. Michael's going to die a second time. Alone no longer has his out, so he might just have to zip away. This is turning into a very rough fight for Infamous. You've already sort of lost Michael twice. A is going to get taken down here as well. They'll get the core heroes out, but that's... That's very costly, and... I don't know, there's a part of me sort of wondering, they, they tried to go on to Yamsun with really just, what, two heroes at the start of that fight, and eventually they get him, but the cost was way too high, and now Devi, can he actually do this by himself? Well, he's not by himself anymore, Esk is going to come in, question is moot, Parker is sprouted inside <laughs> with Esk, that's, that's obviously not the way he wanted to play that, but gets caught up, taken down, they'll give him the tip, and what card get a third kill. And the game is starting to feel very bizarre. Infamous are really trying to work towards this timing. Uh, they would have, I was going to say triple BKB, but Alone actually uh, turns around, buys the Treads, buys the Kaya. And I really am starting to feel the pressure that this IO has put on themselves here. No hero is really having a great game now. Oscar's going to get hit by that tree, gets taken down in the top lane, which is the combo of the two heroes. It's where Al Alexo maxing that Decrepify does so much damage with that Avatos. Uh, the game is just not really coming together right now, and it only gets more difficult, especially if Yamsun can just continuously kind of put his head down, work towards this Deso once he has it, then Roche is where the stakes are at in the game. I just wonder if Infamous are really going to be able to hit this BKB timing on both the Night Stalker and the Nature's Prophet, and then have the game just work after that point, because we haven't seen that punish. We haven't seen a Demonic Purge landing on a Tiny that's overextending we haven't really seen all too much gameplay coming in from Infamous, aside from the early stages. They really are starting to fall behind their opponents here. Yeah, they've been uncharacteristically passive just for the team in general, and specifically uh, for this lineup that they've drafted. So they do still have time to correct course there, and 
maybe try and regain a little bit of that momentum, but if they wait too long, it's just going to be wildcard coming after them again. It's also where these BKBs, I am wondering how much they actually change here as Alexo is so close to being on the prowl here. And Alexo has a force staff. I mean, he is ready to go. He's ready to play. He's ready to save and suck whoever tries to get gone on. It's where I think Infamous is something that you're not seeing on their side is you're not getting that Blink Dagger coming in from Oscar. You're not getting that secondary initiation. A nightmare situation, they end up having to walk at their opponents. And while they're almost stuck in their base here, no smoke, no easy play. I just feel like they're being way too passive because now free Aegis, sure, easy. So passive that Wildcard just walked into the pit. Uh, Oscar's gonna try and turn around here. He pops the Dark Ascension. They're looking to go after Sammy, but they can't even take the Bane down all that quickly. The Fiend's Grip gets turned onto Parker. They oh, need to be able to relocate him out of here, but they're not gonna be able to do so. Oscar dead. Parker gone. Alone is gonna zip in, but by the time he does, all of his teammates are already dead. There's, there really is just no fight here, and he used a lot of mana in the process here. He is gonna try to find a little avenue out but he's just getting chased they're gonna hit him up with the orchid they get onto him with the avalanche they should be able to finish this kill the decrep comes in and lone falls as well four heroes dead uh sammy did eventually die there on the very back end of that fight but that is the only positive thing that you can say about that team fight for instance yeah they just kind of again waterfall in the io when they relocate in you get the sleep you get the immediate grip uh, all of that nature's profit ulti was tanked up by device spiders as well so they really overestimated how much damage they actually had there and well you run away from a who simply is keeping it at the tier two we there's no other way to meet up for that team fight you can't really have any moment in the fight if you guys are just going to run away from him i don't know it's where if wildcard do make a jump onto these tier twos i could see them having a little bit more structure in these fights but I feel like right now Infamous are a little bit lost. Um, well, that's interesting, Sammy. Not 100% sure what that's supposed to mean, but... Is dropping he, is in all okay? chat? I have no well, clue. Uh, um, somebody might want to check on your boy over there, because... I don't know what that was supposed to mean, but... A little bit of random all chat. Time. Oh! Wildcard... Not immediately looking to push into anything at the moment, but at the point that we've reached in the game, they really can't afford to maybe play this a little bit more slowly, take that step back. You are establishing control over the map, pushing out these lanes, and really the only sp split push play that Infamous can rely on is uh, Parker, who just got jumped in on. Fiend's Grip is going to be applied. The Pugna's TPing in. The Relocate is going to be here. Parker goes for the BKB. Should just TP out right now, really, but you're going to try and turn and... Okay, that worked remarkably well. I thought more than Alexa was coming. It is going to come now as Esk does make oh. his move. Ooh. Make his move in. They killed Michael, so Oscar now has to TP out. And Okay. Crisis averted. They get everybody out of there safely, but it certainly looked a little bit funky. No, that was uh, certainly a little bit weird. I, I think everybody thought the IO got everybody out there, but then he just dies at the last second. But that's where Parker uses BKB, S tracks him down, gets the toss. A is there. He has the disruption. It doesn't work out for him. And nobody else is coming up here, so he will have to leave as well. Hopefully he gets the TP off. Yeah, one second on Ava isn't able to make it happen, but... This is starkly different from Malone's Tiny. Esk just has so much net worth. He has time to go back for the shard. He's just going to continue to farm. And he's not even the highest net worth on his team, which is really the most worrying sign here. And with Yamsun picking up his Blink Dagger. Oh, oh wait. He actually sold it. And he actually bought uh, Shadow Blade parts. Love when the pro players decide to make a different decision. But regardless, that's your initiation tool, your secondary initiation tool. I just don't feel like Wildcard are really lacking anything right now when their draft certainly does. It feels like they've really gotten everything they want. Divide got his Ags. He can be across the map whenever his team needs him to be. Once he has a BKB, he's no longer the target. I'm just very worried with how much net worth Wildcard are getting right now. They're really getting everything. Yeah, I mean, everyone... I was going to say at least core-wise, but even support-wise, is sitting on just an insane amount of farm. Alexo and Sammy are both uh, very far ahead of their counterparts on the infamous side so sure do have a lot to work with here and that's okay he's tp'ing himself back so 
Zip TP, not going to uh, put alone in any danger there, but I don't know. How how long can they be okay with really just uh, the Parker split push at this point? Because it's not ineffective uh, for the Nature's Prophet by any means, but it's it's not exactly efficient stage. Yeah, no, it's not pretty. It's not easy. I think that's where infamous the team who we expect to be the aggressors the team with what is three bkbs right now everything is going to be these bkbs as a is going to be forced to respawn but the good news is that once he respawns they have everything this is their triple bkb timing it's no mech on michael there's not really any net worth you're getting on the wisp anytime soon the aegis was just reclaimed if infamous don't make a move with this next night nighttime with this next dark ascension I feel like the game just could be spelled out for us at this point. And, well, there's your spinner snare. There's your webs up on the high ground. Sammy Boy is postured so aggressively here. And the grip. Oh, no. And... Michael's yeah. just got to go for the reload. He's got to pull him out right now. And alone is going to get pulled back. They lost Oscar, though. And now Parker is in trouble as well. Alone tries to zip back in. But this is a rough fight for them. They're trying to hold their own, though. They've taken down Sammy. They're getting onto the Raking as well. But that reincarnation is going to come into play. And... How much more do they have in them? Alone is trying to push forward. The silence, though, is going to force him to regroup with his teammates. Speaking of regrouping, Sammy bought back and rejoined his teammates on the front line. So, wildcard have their full five. Oscar's back up in five seconds, though, so the same will be true for Infamous in just a moment. But in the meantime, the Rax is falling. Can they get the melee? They would love to just be able to finish it off, but Oscar is actually going to preempt them just a little bit. The Rax does fall, but Oscar wants to fight, or actually, maybe he doesn't. With how quickly... Wild Carter backing off. Oscar's going to run out of time on his BKB, and he doesn't actually want to be here anymore. May not have a choice. Ran into the Spinner Snare, going to get himself rooted up. Oscar dies. Michael will look for no tether, because it's seven seconds out. They could just sort of lock him down. Wraithfire Blast is going to be there into the Decrep, into Nether Blast. And Yamsun will find the kill. And Infamous, I, I don't know. At a certain point there, it was sort of mission accomplished. You had stopped the push, but Oscar just keeps on going, and that's that's just a GG, okay? We'll just call it quits there. Yep. It's not too pretty, huh? Kind of an easy game for wildcard, and I really thought, uh, at least hopefully, with the play from Infamous, we could have seen maybe a few more signs of life, but I think that's where unfortunately at the end of the day you look at their lineup you see that the wisp is going to get off to a pretty slow start here they really are entirely dependent on the loan to make things happen in this game they don't get the mid tower all too quickly they play into the blink timing coming in from esk the tiny never really gets to slow down divide gets to pretty much take wherever he wants onto the map and of course you know, 24 pick brood, you know, they're a little dirty. They're a little bit uh, nasty with the picks here, especially today. But uh, at the same time, you give them a little bit too much space. Your support duo can't really make any counterplay. I think, again, it was just kind of all in on the Storm Spirit. And neither Oscar or Parker was really helping them out all too much. But again, a very clean victory from Wildcard. They are still proving themselves continuously. Yeah, I mean, really could not have played that one much better. That Broodmother hits the exact timing that they want. You take a look at the scoreboard here as well. No deaths for Alexo on the Pugna. No deaths for your Broodmother. So they play so cleanly and efficiently. The only person really dying at all was Sammy on the Bane. But that's kind of what you pick position 5 Bane to do. He eats the deaths so that the rest of the roster doesn't really have to worry about it. And Infamous... Uh, they, they, they get a little bit worked over here. The good news for them, though, is that they do have another series to play, so they're not done yet. They have a shot at some, well, not quite revenge, but maybe redemption. But for this series, they just got, uh, pretty much outplayed. Yep, it's where, uh, they will get some more games in, but it's also where I think Infamous shake it off, you know? I Infamous, I don't want to say always does this because they're usually the team that wins 1-1s one -ones a lot of these squads, but uh, they're always a team who, whatever they play versus their regional rivals, always feel like they can get a few games off of their uh, their close uh, competitors, but whenever it comes to the NA versus SA matchup, sometimes they really do just kind of drop the ball, but, you know, that's where we'll have to see how they actually seed up. In the meantime, as I said before, we are going to be seeing Infamous in action again. They will play in our final series against Infinity. Uh, before we transition into that last series, though, we are going to have ourselves an interview uh, with Sammy 
of wildcard. We didn't get to talk to any wildcard members after the previous series because we had the back-to-backs, so we wanted to sort of give them time to rest. But now we'll get Sammy in here to uh, have a quick conversation with us after his team goes 4-0. and oh. So we'll be back in really just a minute or two once we've got that set up. So stick around and talking to Sammy in just a little bit. 